It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Albert Capati, who's a general dentist in Springfield, Illinois, where he owns two practices, one for general dentistry and one for sleep apnea and temporomandibular joint disorders. Dr. Capati is also a musician singing in several cover bands since 2012. He has appeared in Springfield Musical Theater Productions. He likes to make dental themed parody music videos for YouTube. Man, send me send me all those and I'll, I'll post them all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just email all of them to me, Howard at dentaltown.com. Um, do- Dr. Capati started taking hemp oil for better sleep in 2017, but Sue found out that it had properties that were perfect for dentistry. After not finding much information on the use of cannabidiol, is am I saying that right? Cannabidiol? Cannabidiol, second try. Cannabidiol, which yeah. is CBD in dentistry. Albert created the Facebook group Hemp Oil and Dentistry. He is currently creating a website hempdentistry.com to help dentists implement hemp products and their practices and plans to start speaking about the use of cannabis in dentistry. In his first stint as a dental speaker, Albert was a finalist in Dentistry's Got Talent, a competition put on by Smiles at Sea back in September 28th. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Howard. You know, when I first started hearing about um, medical marijuana, And then it became recreational marijuana. The first thing I was thinking, especially when it got mainstream in Colorado, is that somebody could really do a lot of marketing for dentistry because everybody that I know that's from a university that does research on the macro of the United States and dentistry, they always consistently find that it's about two markets. Half uh, buys on price and half is afraid of the dentist. And you get any dentist that starts um, bringing in an anesthesiologist and putting people to sleep. Those are the guys doing all the big cases. And um, and so I'm so excited that I finally found a dentist that'll come on my show and talk about marijuana and dentistry. Do you want to start there? Or I, I know you do so many other things, but let, let's start with the uh, um, let's start with the most controversial things. And I, when I was a little kid, my little brother was gay. And the whole society, you know, they the didn't think much of that. And if you got caught drinking Jack Daniels, uh, they would uh, help you home. But if you got caught smoking marijuana, you'd be in jail. And now I'm a grandpa and gay people can get married and you can buy pot. And uh, so uh, so what I tell the young millennials is that, um, you know, these social transformations are done a generation at a time. So you're, you're not going to change people's minds. Um, you know, so, so when you're, when you're 25, you think the world's going to change the next day. And then when you're 56, you realize these, these changes take decades and decades and generations. So I cannot believe I am sitting here 31 years out of dental school and you can actually say marijuana and dentistry in the same sentence. So that, that, that so, so tell us your journey about marijuana. Um, actually, uh, I've never taken marijuana myself. I, I, I grew up really straight laced. What I do in dentistry is actually hemp. Hemp is a little different than marijuana. Um, is hemp doesn't have any of the THC uh, in it. And that's, that's the thing that actually gets you high. So yeah, I've actually not uh, taken marijuana and I'm not giving marijuana to my, to my patients, but I, I am learning quite a bit about it. And I think there is quite a lot of applications in it. But I prefer not to get the high, not to give the patients the high, and just go straight for the angiolytic effects and uh, the pain effects and uh, and the anti-inflammatory effects of CBD. And so, did you say angiolytic? Yeah. Well, anxiety uh, making it yeah less less anxious. That's what I generally use it mostly for uh, when I give my patients when I'm really really scared of the dentist. Uh, and they're coming to me at the first time. I, you know, I, I asked them, well, do you think you need anything to help you with your anxiety? And obviously they, they say yes all the time. And uh, I say, well, uh, have you heard of uh, hemp oil? Have you heard of CBD? Um, it's kind of like marijuana, but more, uh, uh, but you don't get the high from it. And they generally say, yeah, I've heard of it or, or I know somebody who's taken it. And uh, yeah, I'd like to try it. And they, usually they try it and then, they're relaxed. It's, it's, it's working for me better than nitrous oxide. No kidding. Better than nitrous oxide. So now I grew up in uh, Kansas and uh-huh. along all the railroads, there were hemp plants growing because that's how they made rope. 
And uh-huh. so, so the, I mean, you, I mean, when I was little, I mean, you, you, it, you couldn't walk down, you couldn't walk a mile down a railroad without finding hemp plants growing wild off site. So the hemp that makes rope is what you're using to get the CBD, but it's, you're not necessarily looking for the type of hemp that grows THC. Right. Actually, so hemp as a definition uh, has THC in it, but at, at low levels, at 0.3% or less. So if, if it has more than that, it can't be called hemp. Uh, so you can't really get high off of hemp. You'd have to actually probably smoke a football field worth of it in order to, to get the amount of THC you need uh, to, to get high. So there's marijuana and there's hemp. There's two different sides of the plant. They're like kind of cousins to each other. Um, but they've been lumped together as uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the uh, DEA and FDA. So they're all lumped together as a, a class uh, category one. So that you, you can't, uh, it says that the DEA says that it doesn't have any beneficial effects and it's highly addictive. And, um, but it's none of that. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, and right now there's a farm bill that's being, it's on President Trump's desk right now waiting to be signed that's going to actually define hemp and marijuana as two different things. Uh, and it's going to legalize hemp uh, all across the board. And so hemp is going to be back to like a cash crop again. It's going to be uh, just like corn, soybeans, cotton, uh, all states will be able to grow it. <coughs> and, uh, and yeah, so that's right. That's on President Trump's desk right now, waiting to be signed. And what? And do you think he's going to sign it? He's he's been for it. He's he's uh we're we're waiting any day now. It's uh, it passed the Senate and then it passed the uh, the House uh, last week or the week before. And no, just last week. And it's been on his desk uh, since Monday. And, and what's and what's going to happen if he signs it? If he signs it, then it's going to take it's going to be taken off of Schedule One. Uh, as a as a drug, it's not going to be classified as drug as a drug anymore. Um, marijuana still will be, but hemp will not be. And all the all the cannabinoids, uh, CBD, CBG, all the other cannabinoids in uh, in the hemp plant are going to be uh, totally legal to be able to made uh, in in the products sold across state lines. Hemp is hemp as a crop is going to be. Uh, um, Eligible for uh, crop insurance. Uh, that's that's been a that's been big. Um, also, you're going to be able to just grow it. Um, uh, all farmers will be able to grow it just like they would uh, corn and soybeans. So what? How are you using? So so what do you just refer to it as CBD? I mean, or cannabidiol? Is that how you uh, mention it in your marketing pieces? Um, it's. I what, will what you- from now on because of the uh, legality, but. Um, before, if I said CBD before, uh, then then I'd be drawing a lot of attention to myself. Uh, uh, but, but that's marketing, though. I mean, every Fred Joyle always says everything is marketing. Everything I mean, is marketing. I mean, gosh, right. if you were in Springfield and you were the the hemp dentist, I mean, you're even starting a website, hemp hempdentistry.com. Is it up yet? Uh, it is up, but uh, all it is is just a landing page for a uh, for a email list right now. But uh, but yeah, if I I can do hemp, fine. Yeah, there are hemp products everywhere. There's beauty products uh, and stuff out there that's being being sold right now. So hemp and hemp seeds have been legal for uh, for for a while now. But if you say CBD, uh, so I um, I had a Square account. You know how you get credit cards through uh, you get uh, payments through credit cards through, uh, through Square. I had. Everything, everything was fine until I labeled one of my products as CBD, and then they just canceled my, uh, they just canceled my account with them without any notice. So, uh, yeah, as soon as I put CBD, that got flagged. Uh, but I had hemp everywhere, so it's. But when which I got, I got to, I got do a pull out little lesson for the young kids. Um, sometimes in your practice, this happens a lot when you're young. They know you're green and naive, and you're taking credit cards. And some patient will come in. They'll get a cleaning. They'll get their fillings done. They'll say, "Oh, by the way, uh, doctor, um, I have this home business, and um, I don't do enough sales to get a credit card clearance. If I can use your credit card terminal." 
I'll give you 25% of the sales. Okay, once the bank finds out that you did something like that, you're gonna lose your credit card terminal. The way they keep credit card fraud down to 3% or less is through massive, massive focusing on who's taking the credit cards. And the reason that person can't get a credit card terminal is because something really shady is going on. And I probably know of about five dentists in the last 30 years that lost their credit card privileges uh, because they were uh, running stuff through for other people. And it's all over your contract, which you never read because you're a dentist. And when you were taking physics and chemistry, you learned everything about law and real estate, and marketing and advertising. But damn it, don't ever clear a credit card for someone else because once your practice can't take a credit card, it's going to have a material impact on your deal. So so what are you using the CBD? Uh, the uh, You're not calling it CBD. What are you calling it now? now? Well, uh, I, it's hemp oil. Um, hemp oil. Yeah, yeah, hemp oil. And it's just a oil that's been extracted from the hemp plant. It's a full spectrum. So it's the whole plant, not just a, uh, not just a um, isolate of it. Not, they're not just grabbing the CBD. They're grabbing the entire plant and, uh, and making, it into a, making it into an oil. And, and does it have THC in it? Um, it would have minuscule to uh, THC and if it's from the hemp plant you can get CBD oil um, if you say CBD oil you gotta you gotta have um, kind of differentiate you can have CBD that's from hemp or C CBD that's from marijuana so marijuana derived CBD oil would have THC in it and you would have some psychoactive properties in it but hemp derived CBD oil will not have any THC in it so the one that I, I'm always asked, am I going to get, uh, am I going to test positive on a drug test if I take this? And if you stick to hemp derived CBD products and like the, like the one that I, uh, that I use in my practice and I, and I tell doctors to use, uh, Zilis, uh, ultra cell, um, they, uh, they won't, they've no one, no one's ever tested positive from, uh, from taking ultra cell. Uh, but you can test positive from, uh, marijuana derived CBD and you might test positive because this whole industry, the whole CBD, uh, dietary supplement, uh, that whole industry is very loosely regulated. There's no regulations really, uh, on it. So you can put anything on the label and, uh, even if it might be misrepresented of what you, uh, you put inside the product. So there are cases where you've had hemp derived CBD, CBD, and they've tested positive on it. But so that's why you really have to pay attention to what product you have and what, uh, where it's coming from. It has to be organic um, because it has a whole bunch of um, uh, hemp as a plant just absorbs everything. So pesticides, uh, toxins in the, in the soil. Uh, if it's not organic, you're going to get all that. And then once it's, once it's into an oil, it's going to get into your body and you're probably going to do uh, do your body worse than, uh, than better. So, well, it, it is crazy that we take the smartest children from America and we send them to chemical engineering school and they make these molecules that if a grasshopper licks it at one part per million, it just rolls over dead. And then all those chemicals and pesticides end up in the food chain. Oh and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, you know, I'm basically everyone I know that's a dentist around here. Like, like when they get fruit and vegetables, if you peel it like an apple or banana or an orange, they don't care. But if you're not going to peel it and you're going to eat it like a berry, a strawberry, a blackberry, a blueberry, uh, they only buy organic. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been a, con I'm a convert now. I am like buying only organic and, uh, and yeah, I've seen enough documentaries to, to, to scare me off of uh, anything that uh, that's Roundup ready. Yeah, it, well, it, it's so sad. I mean, I mean, our smartest people in America are making these compounds to kill, you know, ants and flies and that, you know, they don't realize that, you know, that you're going to end up eating that. Yeah, um, what, what's the dirty dust? And, and what's also is so many people try to um, think they're eating good. They always talk about <clears throat> the dirty dozen of the filthiest stuff we eat and number one is strawberries, strawberries. number two yep. spinach nectarines apples grapes peaches cherries pears tomatoes celery potatoes and sweet bell peppers and god only knows um um what you're eating but um yeah you just have to go to organic and it, and it's also when i was little 
you know, we all knew the seasons of the fruit. Like we used to get excited when kids would come to school and say, oh, the strawberries are blossoming. And then a couple of weeks later, oh yeah, grandpa says we're gonna be able to pick them too. You would save up for it like Halloween or Thanksgiving or Christmas. But now that you have this year round, year round. Uh, 20, yeah. 24, no one knows the seasons. So, I mean, imagine if Halloween was every night. It wouldn't really be a trick or a treat. I mean, if you had Thanksgiving dinner every Thursday, it really wouldn't be anything to look forward to. And I really think it was better when all these things were organic, all these things were seasonal. And the best way to just like start drooling when you think of strawberries is having to wait for it to come into season. And then mom would load her seven kids in a station wagon and we'd drive down there and we'd pick them. And that was just exciting as trick or treating. You know what I mean? Because because you couldn't eat them year round. And when you're eating them year round, there's a price you're paying and it's dirty uh, pesticide. So tell us about your journey. How how did you go from a dentist to learning about CBD? Yeah. um, My mom was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. So um, my mom was having a lot of trouble sleeping. She was get up, getting up probably about five or six times a night and having a hard time getting back to sleep. So uh, she has a friend who's an oncologist who was using, uh, using that product, uh, Ultracell, to kind of lower her, lower her blood pressure. And she did a lot of research on it and said, well, maybe you should take this. And so gave her, gave her a bottle. And, she, and uh, my mom tried it for the first time, and she slept all through the night, the first night. And so she's been taking it ever since. And uh, and how would she take this? Is like like a teaspoon of a teaspoon, a tablespoon. Uh, it's in a jar. How, how do you? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to to uh, to to do it. The one that I use, the Ultracell. Uh, actually, I have it right here. Um, it's an oil. Uh, it's been made water soluble for better absorption. And I would just take about a milliliter of it. I can take it right now. And just squirt that underneath your tongue and hold it there for at least 30 seconds. I do it for a minute or as long as I can. And then I uh, swallow it. And for my patients, it pretty much takes effect probably in about two, two minutes, two to five minutes, and they're feeling much more relaxed. So, Really? So, so, so are people taking it for just anxiety, like an anxiolytic drug? I mean, are, are people, you know, you, have, you know, people that have panic attacks or they, they don't like to go Christmas shopping because they're afraid they're going to get a panic attack Are people using it for that. Yes, definitely. Definitely. They're using it for that. They're using it for inflammations, arthritis. They're using it for, well, the, th- the two things that it's, it's been proven to do, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that it does almost everything. Um, but, uh, anxiety and, uh, children with epilepsy. Uh, so it, it helps prevent seizures, uh, in, in kids that have epilepsy. Uh, but it, we have anecdotal evidence that, uh, or just, re, uh, accounts that, uh, that have said that it's, it's good for, uh, uh, for chronic pain, inflammation. Uh, I use it for my gout. I get gout sometimes. And when I take it, it, the pain, less than halves and also the time period that I have it uh, uh, usually goes goes away quicker. Um, headaches, migraines, fibromyalgia, um, a lot of things. I can't say that it cures any of the stuff because it's not FDA approved for any of that. But um, but man, if you look up CBD and you put in anything, any, any disease, um, you will find an article, an account, a comment, you'll find something about how it helped. So it's amazing how far reaching it uh, it can do, and I can I, we can explain it through the uh, through en- through, uh, through the endocannabinoid system. I can talk about that talk about that later, but uh, but yeah, keep uh, it, it, you wanted to know how I wanted how I uh, I got it. When, 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 when you said you take it when you get gout, gout is uh, an excess of uric acid in the blood, hyperuricemia. They think it's from eating too much uh, meat, poultry, seafood. Why why do you think you get gout? What do you think causes it, and how do you think CBD helps? Um, I get gout anytime I have a little too much to drink uh, alcohol. So um, it uh, it collects my, my uric acid crystallizes, it collects in my big toe or my ankle, and I can't walk for a week. So, um, huh? So you must not be Irish. We were <laughs> we we were born to drink. America only has fourteen percent alcoholics. Ireland is thirty eight percent. 
the we, only con- the only country that beats us Irish are the Russians at forty percent. Oh my! We need Isn't to that catch amazing? up. Then. What's I'm that? I'm not going to help that number because I am a lightweight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so so now um and so how are you using it in your dental practice? Okay, so I um either I I so I, so let's say I meet the patient for the first time. I'm doing a new patient interview, and they put I have a, a questionnaire that says. Uh, is there anything that uh, makes you nervous about dentistry, uh, gets you, uh, gives you dental anxiety? Uh, and if they check yes, then I'm, all, I'm automatically asking them, um, well, uh, have, you, have you tried hemp oil before? Have you heard of it? Uh, and if they haven't, then I've talked to them about it. If they have, they're usually like, yeah, go ahead and give me some. Uh, but um, I can sell a small bottle to them, like a, a seven-dose bottle, and they can take it the night before, get a good night's sleep, come back. Uh, the good thing about it is that you can actually drive. You can drive with it. I can do dentistry with it. There's no, there's no in. Uh, it's not inhibiting your uh, your movements or anything like that. So, so it's better better than the, like the benzodiazepines that we're we're prescribing because you don't have to have like arrange a, dr- a ride for your patient. Uh, they can they can drive to and from the from the office with it. But uh, they can take it the night before, get a good night's sleep. They can take it. Um, maybe a couple of a uh, couple of milliliters before uh, before coming in, uh, or before their appointment, right before the appointment. It usually takes about two to five minutes to settle in uh, if you're using the products that I that I tell you, um, and it lasts for the entire appointment. Actually, it lasts a good. It's, this stays in their body for about twelve hours uh, at least, and so they're probably going to get a really good night's sleep uh, when they go home. So it helps with now, anxiety. It helps with uh, their inflammation at the end of the at the end of the appointment too. The post-operative pain too. So it's it's perfect for dentistry. Now is this on your website? It should be. <laughs> I am I am horrible. Uh, my, my my. What is your website? Capital Dental. Capati Dental is is my is my practice. Oh, Capati. So C A P I T I. C A P A T I. Yeah. Dental. dental. Dot com. It should be on my website, but I am awful at uh, updating that. But I mean, is it is this a marketing thing? See, it I'm not fi- I'm not finding the website. Can you send me? Can you find his website and text it to me? Yeah. Capati Dental. Um, I don't know if I'm spelling it wrong. C A P A T I. Is it www. C A P. C A P. Yeah, C A P A T I. A T I. Dental. Dot com? Correct. It's tough when you're, uh, <laughs> uh, Capone. I'll send it to you. Oh, okay. I, okay, I just got it. Yeah, always send me the website. Also send me, uh, Hemp Dentistry. And then you got another one, SpringfieldSleep.com, right? Yeah, that's for the, uh, I, I have a Koala Center for Sleep Disorders, um, yeah, part of that and matchup. and we had Ron on the show, the founder of that, uh, Ron Will Wiley. Um, he was uh, episode number. Uh, um, oh, let's see, what number was he? He was number um, five seventy six. Koala Sleep Centers with Ron Wiley. Uh, with enough initials behind his name to uh, fill up a few alphabets. So so you have two different practices. You have yep. Capati Dental, and then you have um, a Koala Center. Uh, talk. To, how's that going for you? How, how's that journey? Oh, um, the airway journey has been uh, amazing. It, I'm By learning all the relationship between airway and teeth, I'm finding out everything I did wrong in the past 15 years that I've done dentistry. (laughs) Um, I think there was another uh, airway dentist that was on your show recently. Uh, I think it was uh, Gelb actually. Uh, He had a good show with you guys. Um, But yeah, uh, it's- Who who was it? uh, Dr. Gelb, I think. Okay, Gelb, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's- So uh, how do you you split your, are, are the two centers in the same building? I'm trying to merge the two, but I actually bought an existing koala from another doctor that's that's here. So it's an, actually a different building. So I, I I work at Kapati Dental from Monday through Thursday morning. And then at lunchtime, I drive over to, to Koala and see patients Thursday and Friday. 
So, so how far apart are these practices? Oh, it's Springfield's a small town, so uh, I would say eight minute drive from one to the other. And you think it's it's good to separate them instead of putting them all under one roof? You like the having two physical locations? There's advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantages is are that I'm separated from my dental practice that has my name on it. So, um, like if I get any referrals from other dentists, it's a little bit easier to to do it because they don't feel usually they wouldn't feel comfortable sending their sleep stuff to another general uh, dentist. I do my best to, 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 to not steal any patients from, from, uh, from other general dentists. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely an advantage of having them separate. But I've got my cone beam at my uh, general practice. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna buy another cone beam at my second practice. I have my laser at my, my I, I could use a lot of these big equipment items at both, uh, both places, but I, they're only physically able to be at one. So I'm truly, I'm really trying to merge the two next year. You you are going to merge them next year? I would like to. Um, so like have two in the same building. I own my building at Kapati Dental, so um, I can just make room for it. Uh, make some make some minor changes to the layout, and then uh, and get them both in the same same building. So, um, what what is it like practicing in Springfield now? And, and there's actually 33 cities in 25, 33 cities in 25 states called Springfield. That is just crazy. Uh, well, <laughs> 36 Springfield townships. So, in the in um, what what is that cartoon? Um, the Simpsons. And what city is he in? Uh, they're in Springfield. They had a competition a few years ago. Uh, if they can get which state can send in the most votes to make it official, uh, which state they belong to. I think Vermont won. It was very disappointing. Uh, the whole, <laughs> the whole, the whole Springfield, Illinois community was very sad about uh, not getting the the official. But we know it's it's really Springfield, Illinois, in our hearts. Well, you know, it this makes sense. I mean, if you look at all the all the marathons around the world, they're always in the biggest cities. So where's the biggest cities? Where the biggest river met the ocean. So all the marathons are in these big cities at sea level. And that's why the Kenyans kill it. Yes, uh, Kenya is 6,000 feet above the ground. So they're training a mile high. Mm. And then when it's race time, they come down to sea level and they've, they've got more oxygen carrying red blood cells than Lance Armstrong did on his best doping bike run. And uh, just all naturally, I, I, I see that more and more in Arizona where uh, a week before the big race, people will drive up to Flagstaff and they'll go work out on the top of the Mount Humphrey at 12,000 feet, um, you know. And you also see an H and in, in, um, in these uh, these fights when uh, they'll have them in Mexico City, and these people don't understand the elevation. And they'll get to Mexico City two weeks before the fight, and then during the fight they just have zero energy. So, <laughs> so what would you tell someone who um, wants to get into sleep medicine? Because it, it's so tough that uh, they don't get any training on it in school. And it's so hard to keep up with everything in endo. I mean, look what the endodontists are doing. And then and then to turn around and say they're going to get into place the implants. I mean, God, just think of all the knowledge it takes to do implants, bone grafting, sinus lifts, all that stuff. And then when people start thinking, um, well, I'm going to get into the ortho market. I'm going to start doing Invisalign. Just now they get to know everything an orthodontist knows. And then all of a sudden they'll say, well, I want to learn sleep out. And he's like, dude, you can't master everything. So are you, are you, um, so you're doing sleep. So does that mean you're not doing ortho Invisalign or you're not placing implants or is there anything you moved off the table to make room for sleep or are you really just doing it all? I haven't gotten into implants yet, but I want to. Um, but yeah, I want to learn everything right now. So actually a good story. Um, before, before I did sleep, um, I have sleep apnea myself. I didn't know how bad until I treated myself. So I made myself a, a herbs to herbs Actually, Rod, uh, Dr. Willie made it for me. Uh, and uh, we treated my sleep apnea. And around the same time I was taking hemp oil, I, like, I started taking hemp oil. So my health just took a jump, just a, just a, just a shot. It just, it just shot up. My health, I lost about 15 pounds. Uh, I, have, I had more energy. I was getting such good sleep. And my staff just saw a change in me and my brain uh, flipped on and I just wanted to learn everything. So I learned everything about sleep. 
not everything. And there's always something to learn. But I learned a lot about it. Um, I that took me to uh, the ASBA connection, the uh, American Sleep and Breathing Academy convention in in, um, in Las Vegas. I learned about the uh, photona laser uh, and how it treats uh, sleep apnea with uh, with a process called a night laze. I just took that course last weekend. Uh, I took a six month smiles course for orthodontics about uh, about a month ago. Um, I'm learning all I can about biologic and holistic dentistry right now because there's I, I want to get into ozone and uh, so many so many other things. It's just it's just a rabbit hole that I just went in and now I just want to learn everything. So and now I'm I I learned all I can about the uh, the endocannabinoid system and the uh, uh about cannabinoids i'm trying to learn more about marijuana uh because there's definitely applications i have a, I have a friend uh out in uh, jersey nicole greco she's starting to do uh dental um uh lectures about uh about marijuana and terpenes uh in in dentistry also so uh there's also dr chris kammer uh he's doing a lot of lectures on uh uh on the endocannabinoid system, and, and he uses the same same hemp oil that I use, so he's uh, he's a good source. But there, yeah, there's so many people learning, and I'm meeting so many wonderful people on this journey. So, uh, Dr. Vic, uh, the one that connected me with you, uh, Dr. Vic, uh, Vic Martel, he yeah. uh, he's just started taking it himself, and uh, not himself, his uh, his son. I think he has um, uh, he has a uh, I'm. Maybe I should leave it to, for him to talk about, but his family is is benefiting from from taking it, and uh, and he's really starting to to pour it on as far as learning all about it. And he's picking my brain almost every day. You know that American Sleep and Breathing Academy you talk about? They're headquartered right out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. So yeah. you said you went to a course there last week. Was it in Phoenix? Um, no, that was um, the. The ASBA, I went to uh, something in Las Vegas for earlier this year, like in January. They have their annual the annual meeting. That's where I learned about the laser. And then I took courses. Uh, but um, I was just in Phoenix recently. Let's see. I was in Phoenix for Voices of Dentistry. The, there's oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, they had that out there. But by the time they uh, told me about it, I was already uh, speaking two days. Uh, oh. One day, uh, one day was uh, yeah. I, I had two lectures, but what what was even stranger is both of those lectures were in town. I think one was in Tepe and one was at Mesa. One uh, the one was a dental school and one was something else. But uh, are they doing the voices? Of, what is it called? Voices of Dentistry podcast. Vod uh, Voices of Dentistry uh, Summit, uh, and it's in Phoenix. I think it's in end of January. This uh, come uh, coming up. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be the first one I missed. It was in, it was in Nashville the first first time, uh, and then it w they moved over to to Phoenix, I believe, and they're going to have it at Phoenix for the for the for for next year and then a year afterwards, I believe. It's a great it's a great convention. There's so many so great people there. Were you there because you're a podcaster, or you just wanted to listen to the podcasting people? Uh, two years ago, I went on a whim because I heard that was what it was in Nashville. Yeah, when I was in Nashville. I, I went because T Bone, uh, Tarun Agarwal. I, I heard his podcast, and I'm like, I need to meet this guy. And I heard he's going to be there, and I think he was. I made. I found out about it like a week before, and it's in Nashville. It's a it's a long drive for me, but I went ahead and just just took the took the weekend and, and drove down there, and I met. Oh gosh, I met so many great people. Anissa Holmes. Uh, Glenn Vo from uh, Nifty Thrifty. Uh, I met uh, Dr. Drew Burns. He's got the fee for fee for service uh, podcast going. Uh, so so many so many good people. And then they then they had it again. It was even bigger in, in Phoenix. It's going to even it's going to get so big. There back then there was only like in the first one there was like I don't know maybe like twenty dental podcasts out there. Now I have no idea how many there are. And there are sixty. Um, there are 60 that uploaded on the dental town app and that's, what's really cool because these people have an hour commute, uh, each way to work. And they, so, I mean, you take, uh, like T-Bone, I mean, he puts out a podcast. Um, I love T-Bone, by, by the way, T-Bone and, uh, Samir Puri are the only two dentists that I ever went into partnership with. 
and we didn't even have a contract. And that was so cool. We were partners for 10 years uh, with the townie meeting and never even had a contract. I love those guys. But yeah, if you, um, but you know, most people put out a podcast, you know, maybe once a week or once a month. And these people want a podcast on an hour commute to work an hour commute home. They need like 10 hours a week. And uh, there's now, if you go to the Dentaltown app, there's a quarter million dentists on Dentaltown and 65,000 have downloaded the app. They about, It gets about a thousand more downloads a month and 60 different dentists. I mean, all the ones you just mentioned, Dr. Demographics, the Freedom Blueprint, Operatory Podcast, Dental Implant Practices, Delivering Wow, um, the Dental Amigos, Drive Your Practice, Dental Implants, the Pietro, I mean, the Dental Realist Podcast, Dental Experience, T-Bone Speaks, Love Him, Dentistry. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And it's so cool because, um, you know, they're getting ready to work. And if they're going to work and they're really scared because they got a molar endo, well, they can find 20, 30 different podcasts for an hour speaking on just molar endo, or if they're, or if they're thinking about uh, buying a laser, like you bought a laser, they, they can listen to the, the CEO of the company. Let's talk about that laser. Cause those are big decisions. Um, you went to the, um, American society, uh, no American sleep and breathing association, uh, convention in Vegas. And you bought, you walked away with a Fontana laser. How much did that cost you? Oh, it's, it's up 80,000 plus 80,000 plus. Okay. But for you kids, he, you didn't buy it. You didn't pay $80,000 for it, which would be a balance sheet number. What balances do your, your cash, uh, your assets equal to your liabilities minus your deficit. Did you pay 80,000 or did you sign up for a 60 month lease? I signed up for a lease. Then it was also deferred for a year first payment. So, so, so how long was the lease? Man, I, uh, okay. What's the lease payment? The lease payment is oh wow, it hasn't been my year yet, so I haven't got it down. But um, uh, well, I'm sorry, I, I should know this, but I don't. Oh, it's okay because I'm trying to teach uh, you know MBA school stuff to these guys. So your balance sheet is your asset equals the liability you owe minus the equity you have into it. But nobody, but if you don't go buy 80,000 is not a balance sheet number. It's a cash flow statement. So let's say the payment, it just are easy number. Say it was a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Well, if someone puts an $80,000 asset into your practice and you only have to pay a thousand dollars a month, say for 60 months back and then generate and say that you generate $2,000 of procedures, then you, then your return on assets, fine, but you just returned, you just increase your return on equity. So, um, do, are you doing procedures with your Fontana laser that yes. equal or exceed your, um, coming laser payment someday? Yes, I, I'm sure I will. I will be doing the, uh, the night lays and the smooth lays, all the, all the, um, the, the cosmetic stuff that's going on with it, but yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna pay for itself definitely. Uh, so, so you bought the the Fontana Light Walker dental laser. Yeah, yeah. And it's is like, that a heart? Yeah, it, Photon, so, Photona, I think F O T O N A. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's a play on the word photon, Photona. Um, so, so what what do you what kind of laser is it? What are you? What did you? What got you excited about it? What are you gonna do with it? Um, I got into it because of the uh, the night laser procedure treating snoring and sleep apnea with it. Um, but tell them tell them how how you treat uh, snoring and sleep apnea with the laser. Well, uh, you use uh, a co the, the light walker is a combination of two lasers. You have the uh, erbium YAG laser and the ND YAG laser, and basically you're treating the soft palate and the uvula. You're shrinking it uh, so that there's more airway. <laughs> Uh, and you're making it more firm by uh, uh, by encouraging the the production of collagen uh, in that air airway. It's it, they've got a really good um, story behind how it began. If you if you have a little time to, but yeah 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 we got we got we got the time. Tell tell us the reason I want to talk about it is is you know people dentists don't care if they're going to try a new bonding agent for you know a hundred bucks, but when when they start making an eighty thousand dollar decision and i can tell because on dental town i know what my homies are doing i mean there's a quarter million people on there they um you know they post a couple thousand times a day and what i see is 
you know, half the market just comes on today's active topics, just seeing what everyone's talking about. But then you see this other group of people, well, they'll go do a search like CAD CAM or laser or, 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 or CBCT, and they'll read for hours and hours and hours. So there's a, a real difference between, I, I gotta wait 10 minutes for a hygiene check, so I'm gonna pull out my iPhone and, and uh, pop up Dental Town and read for 10 minutes, versus it's 10 o'clock at night, and you're reading for two hours, well, why? Because it's an $80,000 decision. You know, it's a serious decision when you're gonna buy a CBCT, a laser, a CAD cam. So, so since my homies, um, you know, listening to you, that might be thinking of spending 80,000 bucks on a laser. Hell yeah, man, ta ta take, it, take us through the journey. What were okay, you thinking? So, uh, so the, this started out as a, the laser was started, they started using it with, uh, in gynecology to do, uh, Oh, it's called interlays. Uh, vaginal rejuvenation. Have you ever heard of this? Making things tighter down there to improve sexual pleasure? I have not heard of that. Okay, yeah, they use a laser to basically do, using, a, yeah, uh, firming up the tissue and shrinking the tissue down, down there to make things tighter. Well, there were, there was a gynecologist convention and they had, uh, two speakers that were in one one room that were talking about the, the the photon laser and one snored really bad so they both had a really bad night the first night they were there so they decided to use that laser that treated the <laughs> uh, yeah that, that did vaginal rejuvenation then they tried to use it on the soft palate and uvula and it worked they didn't snore uh, that uh, the next night so I just had it done to myself uh, during the training. I volunteered as a guinea pig. I, the reason why I'm so passionate about sleep apnea is because I have it myself. I have an AHI of, of like 45. So I stop breathing for 10 seconds at a time, 45 times a, a, an hour. Um, and just had this done. And it, you supposed, with a night latest procedure, you have it done three times, about 21 days apart. So just from the first treatment, my snoring went down probably about a about 80%. So it's. So if you, um, if you Google laser labiaplasty, um, Arizona, there is a guy down here. And when you said that, um, I'm not going to say who it was, but I did, um, have dinner with a, um, a woman dentist who was one who was going to be in Scottsdale because she was going, uh, to this laser labiaplasty guy in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I, I said, well, what is that all about? And, and she basically did not like the look of her labia and this guy specializes in labia yeah and i i i just thought it was fascinating i mean i can't believe that people like or don't like what their labia looks like and the, and the number one cut plastic surgery in america is eyelid surgery i still have never met a woman and thought her eyelid could be right or wrong i i just i just it's amazing how um, people are, um, they're the most critical of themselves. So, man, if you think something's wrong with your uh, eyelids or your labia, um, I would, um, I would, uh, that's just, to me, that's well, just wow. Well, I'll be taking advantage of that want, that need with the, with the laser because you can do a lot of cosmetic procedures intraorally that would affect the face. Like, um, actually, uh, well, this is dentistry uncentered. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, we can actually, dentists can cure resting bitch face. So, <laughs> Do you know what resting bitch face is? I do not. Okay, you know how some sometimes uh, when someone's just just relaxed and their 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 muscles and their face just kind of droop down a little bit and yeah. they form form the, this uh, it looks like they're mad when yeah. they're just relaxed. So that's what that's what resting bitch face is. Uh, you you like yeah someone just not trying to smile or anything, but they're not unhappy. But just by the way their muscles relax, it makes them look like they're mad. Yeah. So, yeah. You look up resting bitch face. You'll you'll find you'll find some examples of that. But but with the photon laser, we can actually, uh, you know, uh, plump up the lips a little bit. We can uh, get rid of these lines on the on the corners of your nose and the uh, the corners of your mouth. Who who's the who's the leader of this group? Um, who who is um. Who's the, the uh, done the most cases lecturing on it? Doc, uh, Dr. Schiffman. Um, oh, my gosh, can't remember. What's his first name? Ah, okay. Let me, 
Look it up really quick. But um, yeah, Schiff been down in um in Florida at um Boynton Laser Center. I, oh, Harvey, Harvey Shipman. I, I, I was mixing up. I, I always want to say Howard because I'm talking to Howard right now. So it's, it's Harvey Shipman is. Uh, no, it, it was it was it was bitch face that made you think of Howard. It was Harvey Harvey Shipman in yeah. in, in his uh, DDS in Florida. Yeah, yeah, at the Boynton Laser Dental Center. Um, he he taught the course. He actually developed um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the cosmetic procedures and the. Uh, so he's, 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 uh, excellent. I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed his, uh, his lecture. So you're using this for hard tissue and soft tissue. Yeah. Yeah. I can cut through, uh, cut through enamel if I wanted to. Uh, Cause the one, th yeah. one, the one thing I see, one of the, um, um, one of the guys that was the pioneer of lasers, who was the pioneer, um, laser for children's dentistry out of Chicago. Um, oh, I can't believe, uh, Oh my gosh! He was in Chicago. He was the first pediatric pediatric dentist to use lasers. Uh, pediatric, uh, pediatric. Yeah, dentist. I've been using it for my laser. kids. I can't believe I can't remember this guy's name. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, Fred. Fred. Um, it was it was episode. Uh, number 107. I was so I'm so glad I got him in on the first 100. Um, he was the Star Wars of dentistry, Fred Margolis, and he passed. We've actually oh. had <clears throat> we've actually had several <clears throat> people who've been on this show. I was able to catch um, Fred Margolis, who was a uh, pioneered lasers in pediatric dentistry. Uh, Bob Ibsen, who founded Denmat, and, and um, all those, uh, Carl Misch, uh, implant pioneer. It's always sad when someone I, I podcast interview passes away, but but I think, I still think on these hard tissue lasers, the dead giveaway, the obvious is pediatric dentistry. I mean, number one, sealants don't work because you take technology where you acid etch enamel and put on a bonding agent to enamel. Well, you're not bonding to enamel. You're bonding to pits and fissures filled with just crap and junk and cookie and tartar and plaque. And any research that you look on sealants, half of them fail the first year and they're all gone in two years. And then you only get the little sealant fee of like 25, 35, $40. But if when you run that laser over them without a shot, you can clean out all the pits and fissures. Now you're acid etching enamel and dentin. And by the way, when you clean out a fissure, Gordon, Chris, and I, we talked about this on a podcast. When Gordon, when I use micro air abrasion um, and or, and you clean out the pit and fissure on any primary molar, just right after rub, and you get it all cleaned out, you're always in dentin. So, so when you do the sealant to pit and fissure, it fills a bunch of crap. It's a sealant that's bonded to Oreo cookie and plaque and tartar, and it's all going to fail in a year or two. But when you clean it all out, now you're on dentin. Now you have the survival rates of an occlusal composite. And you have the billing fee of a occlusal composite. I got, I got four boys, and they made five grandchildren. None of my five grandchildren have or are going to have sealants. They're going to get preventative resin restorations. They're going to get all those pit and fissures cleaned out. We're going to get all the junk out of there and then put that resin on. And like I say, I don't know how, I don't know anybody who can clean out the pits and fissures on a permanent tooth and not be in dentin. I mean, it is just mind blowing. So, and, and then, and then well, you don't have to give a shot. Right. And so, so that, so people say, well, it's slower. Yeah, but you don't have to give a shot, which exactly. half of America is afraid about. Then you don't have to let it soak in. You just go right to work. And then who brings who brings the child to the pediatric dentist? Mom. Mom, I don't care if you're a female monkey or ape, bonobos, gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan. Female apes and monkeys talk five times for every time a male does. So now this female ape homo sapien brings in her baby you don't give it a shot you pull out this star wars laser you do the whole thing the kid never she tells everyone yeah she's all over facebook she i mean they're they're they, you know they, they they talk they're talkers okay. and uh so i i think that fontana I, I think a hard tissue laser when you tell me you're a pediatric dentist and you don't have a hard tissue laser i'm, I'm scratching my head go back and listen to fred vargolis um he was um which show was he he was, um, I don't know how to do the backspace on this, on this deal. He was on uh, number, uh, um, 
Uh, Google doesn't show up very good. Uh, just uh, Dentistry Uncensored. I don't know what episode it was. It's not a... Uh... Oh, it was number 107. 107. And my gosh, what a legacy he left behind. Go back and watch that show. So so what are what are you doing? So you're using the Fontana for sleep. Are you doing it? Are you using what else are you using it for? Uh, you can use it for endo. Uh, cleaning out the canal is a lot better with the sweeps method. Um, you can use it for perio. Uh, it's quite similar to the Lanap procedure. Um, you can use it for, yeah, definitely for kids. Kids are awesome because I, I just, I wheel this thing in and I name it, I say, this is R2-D2 and they're like, oh yeah, Star Wars and we're going to fight cavity, we're going to fight cavity bugs with lasers. Uh, who, kids get excited about that I, and I can, and I can, you know, just, he can be on my team. We're fighting cavity bugs in his, uh, in his mouth and instead of, instead of him like saying, ow, the, the, the drill hurts. Um, they're, they're, they're just, they're engaged and they're, they're, they're co cooperating with me. So ever since we got the laser, kids have been a lot easier and gosh, Springfield needs dentists that can treat kids. We did, we just lost, we just had two, um, uh, we just had two pediatric dentists retire in the last couple of years. So we have like one, uh, oh, sorry. I'm having my battery's going low. I probably should have kept this thing plugged in. Can you still see me? I can still. I, well, I can't see you, but uh, I can see a picture of you. Can you plug it back in? Oh, there, there you are. Now I can see you. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's it's been great for. Uh, there's so many applications for this. It's I can't. It. it we definitely need to get a, um, a Harvey Shipman on your on your show to uh, talk about uh, the photon laser. Can, and by by the way, none of these deals are come on, to come on the show. Did I call you or did you call me? Um, well, I emailed I emailed you. Yeah, yeah, and I was referred by the podcast uh, by Varga. Yeah, by, by uh, Vic. Yeah, by Dr. By Vic. By Vic. Yeah. How do you say his last name again? Martels. Yeah, Vic. And um, um, so this isn't a, a commercial for Fontana or lasers. Nobody pays me to come on the show. I don't pay anybody to come on the show. No money changed hands. This is just me uh, talking to my homies, and, and I think um, it's exciting. But it, it reminds me of, of a, um, a chewing out I got by Gordon Christen, who's like 80 years old. He's a god of dentistry. He's, um, he has two sons. He has two sons that are dentists, and, and I'm the same age is his two sons. So um, that that's the relationship. He really is a father figure to so many of us. And um, I wrote this article called Laser, where L-A-S-E-R stands for, I said, uh, laser, does it stand for light amplification, stimulation, emission, or radiation, or losing all savings equal reality? And this was from back in the day, and I said it was a waste of money. And Gordon called me up and he chewed me out. He said, look, Howard, he goes, these guys, um, you know, the patients are stressed. Dentistry is stressful. They got they got to do surgery with their hands. They got to deal with staff and insurance and all these things like that. And burnout is a huge problem. He said, if these guys get excited, if they, if they go buy a laser or say they, they buy CAD cam, or let's say they decide they're going to get into uh, sleep apnea medicine and they, they it's it's hardly like, like people that get into TMJ. Most people that get into TMJ, I mean, the TMJ is not even 1% of their practice revenue. But the thing is, they're going to conventions. They're sitting next to dentists. They're getting fired up. They got something new to think about. It's not always money. It's always, you know, avoid burnout. And, you know, and I, I saw that with my four boys. So you put them in the bathtub with no toys, they're all jumping out you put them in a, in a toy in a bathtub with all kinds of boats and trucks and balls and all that they stay in there all day as long you know so the bottom line is i think um and laser we haven't even talked about marketing the minute i mean i know some dentists who buy a laser and it's on all their marketing pieces laser dentists like you gotta you gotta have a unique selling proposition what what is what makes you different than everyone else if every dentist is the same you're all a commodity so then they shop on price like when you go get gas you don't care if gas came from alaska or saudi arabia so you come up to the intersection there's three gas stations and one's five cents cheaper than the other people just go in there um when when all the dentists are the same they just get their ppo they get their medicaid their access they just go wherever they go but half shops on price the other half doesn't and they're like oh my god this guy's gonna touch me he's gonna do surgery i don't like shots i'm afraid and then they see laser dentistry just the, i mean it's the one piece of equipment where you're just like associated with star wars 
and not Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone did not use a laser, and I watched every episode of that uh, as a kid. So I, I think it's a marketing thing. Sounds like you, just when you're talking about it, you're you're happy, you're smiling, you're, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, if you... If you have to buy something for a hundred grand that makes you run 20 red lights on the way to work, buy it. Because what's the flip side of that? You hate dentistry, you want to retire, you want to get out, uh, you know, and- um, I, was, um, I was there, I was I was burned out. I was burned out about, about four, four years ago. I didn't want to, I, I, I was just going nowhere and then- So what year did you get out of school? Uh, 2002. 2002 and this is 2018 so four years ago 2014 so basically after a decade so after a decade of doing dentistry why do you think you got burned out um i wasn't changing i wasn't i wasn't keeping up the times i wasn't taking ce i was my back was hurting um and uh yeah i wanted to get out my back was hurting so much that that's that's what kind of drew me to sleep because i knew i wouldn't have to be drilling so much uh so but after I started do treating my sleep and taking the CBD, my back's fine. I'm good. I, I have this renewed interest, interest in dentistry. My, my body's healed. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be this, 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 this smiling dentist that you see in front of you if like four years ago when I was miserable, um, wasn't making much money, uh, and, uh, just, just, yeah, just miserable working and, and then not, not doing anything. And then, uh, I'll also have my music to, to fall back on. I'm, I'm in the, I'm in several bands. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now you say, you say you're a singer, so I'm, I'm calling bullshit. You gotta, you gotta sing me something right now to prove to me and my homies that you really know how to sing. Oh my gosh. Uh, Come on. You felt me a tune of something. <laughs> Oh, by the way, by the way, who's who's the guy who they say replaced uh, Michael Jackson for all all that? Marco Bruno, uh, Bruno uh, Mars, Bruno Bruno Mars. Yeah. Uh, are is, are you a fan of Bruno Mars? Oh yeah, he's he's part Filipino too, so we could be brothers. Yeah, the, well, they I mean the people at Rolling Stone and the, the you know the people that take music as serious as we do dentistry, they they say he's the heir apparent of um of uh, Michael Jackson. So can you can you sing one line of Bruno Mars? Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's do this. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> Beautiful girls all over the world. I could be chasing, but I would be wasting. They got nothing on you, baby. Nothing on you, baby. That is awesome, man. That is awesome. Now, have you tried singing that and then shining the Photona laser back on your throat and uvula and then singing it again to see if it changed the, uh, the pitch? I, I, after the night lace procedure, I was a little worried that my, my voice would change. Um, but I think it actually probably even got better. I can hit lower notes uh, better than I than I did before. So, but it's it's so far away from the from the from the vocal cords that it probably didn't really have too much of an effect. But, but yeah, I was I was I was a little worried that. Well, I I know that singing is not subjective because I knew when I was little and you sing too loud at church, you know, your people sit next to you like you know tone it down, you know. But when I had my babies, I had my first baby. I had little Eric. He couldn't even have been six months old. I don't know how old he was. Six, a baby, and I was rocking him and I was singing, and he reached up, put his hand over my mouth, and said, "Daddy, no." No. And I thought, damn. No. If a, if a human under one knows you can't sing, you must really, really suck at singing. I thought, this guy, he I don't think he'd even heard of any, it was crazy. But that's when I knew that singing was not subjective. <laughs> singing is a real thing. You're either good at it like you or you suck at it like me. Um, so I can't believe what we did our hour. That's our brand, an hour on the show. Yeah. Um, so what last I want to leave is... Um, you you just entered something that's really serious. That's burnout. That's it's a huge problem in dentistry. Um, what would your advice be? I'm going to ask you two advice questions. The second to last one. This one. What advice would you give to somebody reading this saying, "Man, I just I I, I hate driving to work. I I, I I I wish I wouldn't have been a dentist. I wish I could do something else. Maybe I should get a different career." What would you say to someone burned out? I would say. Find something that you actually like about it and learn about it and then get rid of the stuff that you, you don't like about it. I mean, I, 
I don't know. I, I I found I did it by finding something that was truly truly interesting to me. Uh, airway is fascinating, and that just leads me to to want to do dentistry, to want to help change somebody's life. Uh, I can save people's lives by changing changing their airway. Uh, that that hits me more than 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 solving somebody's toothache or, or uh, making them their smile uh, a little better. That's great, but saving someone's life, oh my gosh, that's, uh, and changing someone's life, uh, giving back their life, like I had mine given back to me when I got my uh, sleep apnea treated and I, when I started taking hemp oil. Um, yeah, find something that you're really passionate about inside dentistry. I guess if you can't find anything, then maybe you should be in a, in a different, uh, different profession, but you know, I, 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 I had a friend that lived on, uh, that practiced uh, just two miles straight down the street on 48th Street. I'm 48th and Elliott. And uh, he told me that he'd rather be taken out in the backyard and beat with a stick than do a molar root canal. I said, well, dude, there's 4,000 endodontists. Don't ever do one again because if, if that exactly. drives you, because with humans, the minute you do things you don't like to do, for money or because you have to, it leads to disease every time. Disease, depression, burnout. Uh, like yes. for me, I mean, I if I had to pick a specialty, I would have just been an oral surgeon who just pulls wisdom teeth. I wouldn't even have got into implants. There's nothing. In fact, when people come in for four wisdom teeth extraction for me for 31 years, if they fail the financial arrangement, I say, screw it, I just pull them for free. Um, but if I had to be a pediatric dentist, I would absolutely first become an alcoholic and then be the night manager of Village Inn uh, and make pancakes. I mean, I mean, when I meet a pediatric dentist, I just I'm just so happy that there's someone that batshit crazy enough that just wants to work on screaming, crying children. Uh, I, I guess it'd be uh, it's, it, they're kind of like the vets of dentistry. I mean, a vet, none of their patients can talk and a pediatric dentist. I mean, what, what, what can a three-year-old or a four-year-old really say to you? Um, but it's just fine. What you're saying is remove what you don't like and replace it with something you like. I mean, with nine specialties in dentistry, mm. isn't there something you get into? And, and, and then, I, then I always tell them, be a conductor. My favorite dentist of Phoenix the whole time I've been here was a lady who came from Germany and she didn't want to go back through dental school. And the lawyer said, um, yeah, your license doesn't work, but you can own a dental office. So she just owned a dental office. So when you get into these big implant cases, you can have, you can just do the marketing, get the case, diagnose it. And then you can have a periodontist from the other side of town come in every Friday and place the implants, split it with them 50-50. Uh, why learn anesthesiology when you can have a board certified anesthesiologist come in your practice? I mean, I know so many dentists that don't do anything and they make bank just running the show. I mean, it, uh, I, you know, so if you don't want to learn how to place implants, find a periodontist that'll come in your office uh, once a month and do them, uh, you know, just, but just get happy. Find, and I, I think a lot of the dentists burn out is because they're afraid to fire toxic staff. They think, oh, that's hygienist. She's been here for 10 years. All the patients love her. And, they're, they're, and then when they're driving to work, they're just getting a pit in the stomach. Never give person a dollar in payroll that you can't stand that you don't like that you don't want to see i mean i was in this one dentist office and you could look out his window and he saw his hygienist pull up and she was going to get out and he goes oh she's going to come through the back door she's going to walk right through my office so let, let's go and then we, we head off to the break room i'm like you're hiding from your hygienist you give her 40 dollars an hour and you're hiding from her Fire her right now. I'll fire her. You can't, you're not going to have a fun bath with three people in there you can't stand or on the sandbox. I mean, you want to, I mean, I drive to work and I'm thinking, I, I can't wait to see my, my team. And each one yeah. is special for some way. And then, then there's other dentists driving to work, wanting to hide from someone they can't stand. So I love, I love my team. And I did have, exactly what you said the, the toxic hygienist i got we fired her this uh this year and everybody's so much happier from that and it's oh my gosh yeah i love my team my my team is just just amazing i think that's exactly 
Exactly. One and what, what's so bizarre about dental office consultants, because, you know, these dentists, you know, they're, they're really thinking about it, whether they should buy an $80,000 for Tana laser, but they, 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 you never can get them to buy a $50,000 dental office consultant. I don't know what it is. I've told them that a thousand times. The number one return on investment is getting a consultant. But those consultants, and we've had like every one of them on the show, just go back and listen to them. But they'll go into an office and within 10 minutes, they're like, oh, my God, Susie is a malignancy. And, and, and she's been in the office for five minutes and she's been on your payroll for five years. It's like I, I you see it at dental meetings. I mean, so, so many times I'm in dental meeting. I'm like, do you realize that when you're when you're talking to me, your assistant is behind you rolling her eyes? Oh, my gosh. It's like, dude, I don't even know her name. She's rolling your eye. And then you're like, are you? And then they start making all these excuses of why. You know, they can't do anything. It's like, no, I mean, I mean, I, I, that's why I love the NFL, the NFL. How long, how many interceptions do you have to throw before they bench you as a quarterback? <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, they're brutal in the NBA. Yeah. The average player only has a three and a half year career. I mean, I mean, this, the fans know it, the commentators know it. And when they've determined we are never going to win the Super Bowl with Bruno Mars as our quarterback, <laughs> they they fire him. They don't care if he's handsome and can sing. Okay, my, you know, my you got to just clinch their division. So, uh, they are what? Getting rid of, what? Who my clinched Bears? their division? Chicago Bears. Oh, the Bears. Chicago Bears? Oh, yeah. yeah. Having a phenomenal year. Well, I went to dental school in Kansas City. And so I grew up in Kansas. So I was a Chiefs fan. All through growing up, Wichita and all that. When I came out here, um, when the Cardinals got here, I switched. But uh, man, the, the the Chiefs are having a phenomenal year too. There's nice. some. It's really a fun fun time to watch. But hey, we are completely out of time. We went ten minutes over time. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I wish you would write an article about this because you're the rarest unicorn in the circle. I mean, I've been. I've been looking around for someone that could even uh, say hemp, uh, hemp dentist. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would love to have anything to clear because it's it, this is totally all new territory, and it's gonna it's gonna be a long journey to get this information out. I guarantee you, between fifty five and seventy five, there's already probably twenty thousand dentists out there that think any dentist that says the word hemp. Uh, should uh, have the license taken away. So, uh, so yeah, give us more information. Write an article, online CE, whatever you want to do. But yeah. let's get the word out. People will hear more about it. And I'm going to be right there uh, writing up. We talked about podcasts before. I'm going to be, be starting a podcast on it. TempDentistry.com is going to have a bunch of uh, articles on it. And um, join my uh, Facebook group. That's the easiest thing to do, Hemp Oil and Dentistry. That'll... Uh, That'll get you a ton of information right from the get-go. But yeah, if you ever, if you do want to start uh, doing it, or just just call me, just email me. Uh, the, everything's going to be on the show notes, right? So. Uh, so do you want to go by Albert Capati or the Bruno Mars of dentistry? <laughs> After that singing, we're just going to go with the Bruno Mars of dentistry. Thank you right. so much for coming on the show. Thank you.